Hello and welcome to another edition of ATS Fully Engaged Battlefield Walkarounds. Today we're going to look at Blood and Iron Upgrade Edition. What we are upgrading, I am not quite sure, but we have more content, so that is excellent. We have a Pacific module, a not complete module, and that is by design, that's why it's an upgrade, presumably. And you're supposed to have other stuff you're upgrading. This particular module looks at the Battle of Item Pocket in Okinawa in 1945. So this is at the very end of the war. And Okinawa is the last island on the island hopping chain. They're going to use uh, the airfields, airfield, airfields there to jump off to attack Japan from by land and air. Uh, that didn't happen, but that's for another day. Uh, the item pocket specifically, I could not tell you. That was <laughs> the battlefield walk around says it's supposed to have a like a historical document included, but that did not come with mine. Um, but on the parts manifest, it did not say that was supposed to be there, so maybe it, maybe it wasn't. At any rate, you can find that online because that's online somewhere. There's a link yeah. in the battlefield walk around. So. The action we have going on here component-wise is we have eight scenarios on four cards, which are back here. We have aforementioned battlefield walk-around, which is just a nice little page. We have an one, try not to move the map around too much so it doesn't de-align. One sheet of AFV cards. So we've got some nice little crappy Japanese tanks, a couple other things, flame tank, fun things like that. And then the map, which is the most important part. Oh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I already unadjusted my map, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we will carry on and make do. We'll try and get this stuff out of the way. The map is going to be... So even though this is a very old module, and I feel like I have an old version I have a, a nice new map so it's four map panels it comes out to 22 by something 22 by 20 I think and it's the glossy cardstock and yes you will have to line up map panels most of the scenarios don't use the whole map though so some of the time that won't be so bad and Kimas we have okay so those are the components and um, Obviously, there are no counters, and yeah, that's why it's an upgrade edition because you're supposed to have be upgrading some other module, possibly Iwo Jima in this case. But yeah, you need you need the Pacific, Pacific stuff. In in this case, you need so Japanese. I'm just gonna go run down real quick, and this might be boring if you just know you can skip ahead to whatever point in the in the video if this isn't interesting for you. But uh, yeah, I haven't written down, and I think it's good to know because. A lot of times, like, oh yeah, I've got enough, and like, no, no, I don't have enough, and and no one else on the internet is going to tell you, but I am here to tell you. So, uh, Japanese, you need eight of the five five nines and ten of the four four nines, um, and of course, you need leaders, support weapons, crews, all that good stuff. I'm not going to list out all, any of those unless you need like twelve crews for some reason, <laughs> which you do not in this scenario. And the Americans, you need eight of the seven six sevens. Nine of the six five sevens and six of the six five sixes. You don't get any of those nine six nine guys. They're really awesome guys, which is sad. Uh, you need a couple of units that are a couple of guns. Japanese a Type ninety eight eighty AA gun, a Type ninety two howitzer, and two of the Type one AT guns. I'm assuming those are pretty common, but I could be wrong. I'm not super familiar with the Japanese armaments. Americans, you need two. Uh, M1 AT guns, two M3 A1 AT guns, the uh, one of the M7 HMC priests, that's the the mobile howitzer self-propelled gun, two POAs is what it says on the on the AFE card in the scenarios. I mean, it's a flame tank, which is very cool. So that's all that matters. But I don't know what a POA is, and I looked for it, looked for it. I might be a, a Sherman variant. I did Google it, and it, I could kind of find some stuff, but. It seemed like a lot of effort to go down the rabbit hole <clears throat> at that point. And then three M4A2s. Um, so not too much in the way of crazy stuff. If you have a Pacific module or two, you are probably going to be okay. Um, and if not, then you, ha you have the very detailed list of what you will need. In terms of VAT supports, uh, there is indeed VAT's module that's the blood and iron map on there. So that is fantastic. Get right to it. 
and let's go over some of the interesting and cool stuff. Let's take a look at the map a little bit more closely. You've got an airfield down in the corner here. Oh, wow, this scenario is revolve around nice, yeah, nice and glare there too. That's uh, that comes with the map. Yeah, a lot of the scenarios revolve around taking the airfield or defending the airfield. You've got a bunch of ridges. You've got some beach up there. Uh, you've got sea walls. You've got I mean, you've got all sorts of Pacific terrain, which is pretty interesting to me. Jungles and palm groves, and there's a ton of linear depressions, ravines, and I don't even know what that is. It's a gulch, so but it looks like not a ravine. Something else. Uh, you have a railway. Uh, there is a, a significant amount of terrain going on of different types. You have Razorback Ridges, which you find in Korea as well. And those are kind of cool. They're like hillocks, but they provide cover, improved cover. Which is, oops, I muted myself there a second. Sorry about that. Uh, which is nice, gives some nice tactical options. They have a few other rules too, but that's kind of the one, the big one, or at least the one I remember, because it's easy to take advantage of. You've got a lot of variation in, in elevation, minus 10 to up to 50. I'm sure line of sight is super fun, although there's lots of wide open spaces too. So maybe it's not so bad. Oh, there's rice paddies too, those are up at the top. But yeah, you've, there's a lot of texture to the terrain. So it looks very cool. <laughs> if then if that's your thing to play on, I, I would enjoy it a lot. Yeah, but it's probably not the simplest. Man, this mic picks up the motorcycles like a boss. Um, yeah, if you like, you know, to play Tobruk in the desert and never have to check line of sight, then this might not be for you. Uh, as for rules themselves, other than the terrain rules, of which, yes, you will need to <laughs> refer to those a little bit, uh, there's a GR6 sound locator, which is indeed in the, in the main rulebook, and that has to do with counter-battery fire, so it just locates by sound, presumably where the enemy artillery is firing from. And it gives you a, a bonus on the roll and makes it a lot easier to suppress their their artillery. So um, that comes up in a scenario or two. So let's just talk real quick about the scenarios. And just kind of run the gamut from small to medium to large. And nothing too huge, but there, I mean, there are some bigger ones, at least for me, I tend to play smaller scenarios, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. There's not like, a hundred squads total between the two sides in any scenario, but yeah, there are a good amount of counters in some of them. But there are some very small ones as well, and then, like I said, some mediums. Mostly infantry. There are those guns. There's only one scenario with the AFVs, so um, as you'd expect in the Pacific. I mean, there is actually a lot of armor in the Pacific, but not not Eastern Front levels of, or, or, or Tobruckian levels of armor swirling around the desert or the, or the steppes. So if you're looking for that, of course, that is not what you're going to find here. But there are a few tanks, and there are scenarios with guns. And there's at least one tonight scenario. I didn't check that too closely, but there is one. It's mostly the Americans attacking, Japanese defending the airfield, the ridge, and then the Japanese trying to take out as many U.S. units as they can. And there are a couple scenarios where the Japanese are attacking. And yeah, those are some of the smaller scenarios. And I think that's about it. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments and all the other usual channels where you can find us. Please enjoy.